to our online Sunday worship service. It is said in Psalm 126 verse 3, The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. And so today as we praise and worship His name, let us worship Him with gladness. Let us, go, let us glorify His name and praise Him today. Hallelujah. A blessed Sunday Church, and again, welcome to our Sunday worship service online here in Ictus Dumaguete. Now, we are at the last part of our series, First Love. Now, as we begin this culminating message, let us open this with a word of prayer. Let us pray. 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this beautiful day where we can gather together to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, today, as we culminate this message, Lord, we are victorious because of you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for all the learnings and the inputs that we can do and respond in your word as we follow Jesus. So Lord, have your way now as we come and dig in in your word. This is all we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, today we are culminating our series, First Love. And we are at the last letter of the word love in this message. Letter A stands for explore. Loving God by loving others. We'll be exploring how we're going to love God and as well loving others in our unique context. That's why today we will be reminded for the last time about why we're having this message. Keeping the first love first. Why? Because... We believe that there will be seasons in our life where we are actually loving God, but we are drifting away. Just like here in Revelation chapter 2, verses 2 to 5, as our entire context and theme verses of this message. And this is a letter to the church in Ephesus because there is that rebuke in verse 4 that says, But I have this against you. You have abandoned your first love. It means that there is that drifting away that at first they're just so in love with Jesus. They are all up for Jesus. But because of the pressures and the tensions that they've been experiencing, they've been starting to drift away. Although they have a lot of good works, although they have really persevered, they have stand for their faith and their doctrine and their belief. But there's one thing. They have abandoned their first love. They're starting to drift away. And this is a great reminder for all of us that as we continue to live for Jesus, we should also become anchored. Because we might be serving in the church, we might be doing discipleship, we might be evangelizing a lot of people, we might be really doing a lot of good works and ministry in our life. But if we're not careful enough, we might be slowly drifting away, abandoning the real first love. That is why in these messages from the first part down to this last and fourth part of the series, we are being reminded keeping the first love first. Not only just loving God, but we should make Him as our ultimate first in every relationship and in everything we do and in every area in our life. So beloved, today... We are now in part four, and the title of our message, Explore Loving God by Loving Others. And we'll be answering this question, how to live out God's love in loving others? How are we going to live out God's love in loving others? So we know that we love God, yes, but how are we going to express it by loving others? And that's going to be the thing that we'll be going through deeper and i pray that we can really find answers through the word of god and allow me to share to you three important foundational truths and biblical applications that we can apply in our personal life that the more we love god the more we know how to live out god's love by loving others so let's begin with the first foundation number one beloved is this i need to lovingly obey god we need to lovingly obey God if we want to live out our love for God by loving others. Remember that in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, the Israelites before are being commanded. And this is the command. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and with all your soul and with all your strength. Now remember this. The, the word that keeps on coming back in this verse is all. All your heart and all your mind, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. It means that God requires us not only a 50% kind of dedication and commitment in loving Him. It is not just an 80% dedication. It's not only 99.9%. But God wants all out, all in and all out when we love Him. That's why we need to understand, beloved, that I need to lovingly obey God. Because sometimes the word obey is a little bit burdened already, even though we don't know yet what God wants us to obey, what God is commanding us. But sometimes because of the word command or obey, sometimes it's already heavy. That's why we need to remind ourselves that each time we obey God, each time we respond to God's command for our lives, we must do it lovingly. Because love casts out all fear, love give us joy, love, give us that, that excitement to respond and obey God. Because without love, it will be a burden. 
it will just be like a law being demonstrated or being responded because for the sake of law. There's no relationship. That's why God is reminding us today that if you really want to live out God's love by loving others, we should lovingly obey God. Not only obey God, but lovingly obey the Lord. Now, I believe all of us, if you are so in love with someone, you will do all the sacrifices, right? You will do all the things necessary to make that person feel loved. And that's also what God wants us to do. That when we do things for Him, it must not be because we are afraid of punishment, we're afraid that we, our answers will not be, our prayers will not be answered, that there will be a lot of testing and trials will come in. No, please don't think about that. God wants you to respond relationally. God wants you and God is giving you an opportunity to express your love for Him. And the greatest um, expression is not just by singing wonderful songs to the Lord, not just by reading the Bible or praying, but to intentionally obey Him without an abundance of our heart. That is love. That is why, beloved, remember this. We show God we love Him through obedience because actions definitely speak louder than words. It's tough and we won't always feel like we want to obey. Our desire for obedience grows as we continue to experience His love his goodness, and His faithfulness in our lives. So, beloved, today, I hope that this first foundation must be in our hearts that everything we do, as we respond to God's command, as we do His, His, His calling for our lives, we should do it lovingly so that there will be joy, there will be love, there will be peace in our hearts. He don't want us to obey or respond out of compulsion, out of fear, but through that relationship in Christ, we can bring glory to Him. Amen? So that's the first foundation. The second foundation, beloved, is this. I need to love myself as a child of God. I need to love myself as a child of God. Now, beloved, Mark chapter 12, verse 31 says, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other command greater than this. Now, notice this. We all need to accept ourselves, our personalities, and imperfections, knowing that although we are not where we need to be, we are making progress. God wants us to love ourselves and our identity in Him. Now, notice this. Now, this is one of the things that we need to understand in terms of the bridging part. It's easy to say, love God and love people. But in reality, if we really don't understand that there is a bridge that so that these two, loving God and loving people, will come together. There must be a bridge. Yes, again, it's easy to say, love God and love people. But sometimes, it's really hard, very hard, and sometimes we struggle in obeying it. It's easy to really just love God with just, you know, with our prayers, with our worship. But loving people, by loving God, I know sometimes it's hard. Why? Because not all people, not God, God is not just telling us, just love those who are lovable. And sometimes it is God who gives us some situation to test our obedience, to test if we truly love Him. He will put a lot of people in our lives that sometimes they are not that nice to us. Maybe those people who hurt us. Maybe those people who rejected us. Maybe there are some people who have caused hurts in our life. And those people are being brought in your life so that you will understand the beauty of what it means to love God and to love other people unconditionally just how the Lord has loved us. But remember this, beloved. Why is it sometimes it's really, really hard? That's the question. You know why? Because the human way of loving we're also expecting. Because we are empty, that's why we love, hoping we will be loved back. Because we're not accepted, then maybe that's why we love, because we want them to feel accepted so that they can accept us as well. But you know what? These things are temporary. And sometimes, the result of loving them with a personal motive will lead us to what? As you love them, maybe sometimes. As you help them, maybe sometimes they will not love you back. They will not help you back. And sometimes we get even more hurt in our life. That's why we cannot love unconditionally. 
because we are also empty. That is why God is telling us, that's the bridge now. Love God, love people. Do you want to love God by loving these people? What to do? How to do it? First, love yourself. I need to love myself, not a, a narcissistic kind of love, but a kind of love that you are being loved by Abba Father, that you are a child of God, you are favored, you are saved, you are forgiven, you are free. Put back that identity in your heart. And the moment that you feel that, the moment that you believe that with all your heart, that you are a child of God, you are no longer slave to sin, you are no longer slave to fear, for you are a child of God, then you can actually love others unconditionally. If you feel that love and acceptance, that forgiveness, you can also accept others. You can also forgive others. You can also show mercy and grace towards others if you put your identity in Christ Jesus. Beloved, remember, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The command is not just love your neighbor, but love your neighbor, the two words, as yourself. Remember, before you can love others, the identity as a child of God and as a disciple of Christ must be intact in your life. Therefore, beloved, God wants us to love ourselves and our identity in Him. Beloved, let me ask you that question today to reflect on. Ask yourself, why I keep on loving up to this very moment? Just ask yourself. Why are you keep on loving those people who are unlovable? Why are you keep on loving? Do you have that struggle in loving them? Ask yourself, why I have that struggle? Is my identity strong and grounded and rooted in Christ? Or my identity is actually losing and breaking? Beloved, let me give you this encouragement. If you feel like that you lost your identity in Christ, that your identity is being shattered and broken because of all the past experiences, the failure and the hurts and the pains, God is calling you home. God wants you to be back. He is offering you His salvation, His beautiful love and mercy and grace so that you will be made whole again. You cannot keep on loving other people as a broken vessel. Be healed, be rescued, be transformed into the kind of vessel God wants you so that He can infill you with the love, with that water, so that you can share it with other people. Because when your vessel, when your jar is breaking, when your jar has holes, it cannot be filled up and you cannot share the water of love towards other people. So beloved, today, God is giving us this great, great reminder. You shall love your neighbor as your self. So, beloved, that's the second foundation that we need to really understand. So, uh, first, it requires to lovingly obey the Lord. Then, secondly, build in your identity. Fill up yourself with that identity, with so much grace, with so much mercy, with so much love, so that it will just naturally overflow towards other people. And that's why the third foundation is this. I need to express God's love to others the way He wants me to do it. Now, notice this. The way He wants me to do it. It means that when we love God and love people, it's not just about how we're going to love people. It's not about how, how good is your strategy or how creative you are in loving. But actually, God has given us some foundational steps and foundations so that we can really love people the way God wants us to be loved. God wants us to love them. It's not just about how we want it. Because most of the time, beloved, notice this. We want to love other people the way we want. So it means it's still not about them, but it's still about us. For example, maybe your spouse, he's, he or she is really desiring to really take time with you. Because he wants to feel that kind of love that you have your full attention to him, to him or to her. But because maybe what you want and what you feel right now is to give that spouse, that wife with a bunch, a dozen of flowers and chocolate, and you feel like, oh, this is the way I want to let to share and express my love for that for my wife. So yes, it's really a good one, but remember, you're not listening to the need of your 
wife. It's not probably a bunch of roses or chocolate, but maybe a time where there's no distraction, a time to communicate, a time to bond with her. So do you see the point? The other love is from you, what you feel you want to express towards other person. But what God wants us to do is this. God wants you and me to really love others the way God wants us to express that love. It means it's still obedience. It's still a command. Lord, what ways you want this person to feel that he or she is being loved? That's why, beloved, it says in 1 John 3, verse 14, We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Now, beloved, loving others is the only way to keep that God kind of life flowing through you. Loving others is the only way to what? To keep that God kind of life to flow through you. What's the point? God wants us to love in a unique and in His way of loving others. Not because that's the way we want to express it. Not because that's how creative we are. But first, we listen to the Lord. Lord, how do you want me to love this person? My wife, my children, my friends, my churchmates, my co-workers, my staff. How do you want me to love? It means it's still inquiring of the Lord, listening to Him, waiting upon Him. And then whatever He showed to you, then do it. But here in Ictus, we want to share this with you. I don't know if you're familiar with um, the five love languages. So in Ictus, we have also this kind of way of identifying. This will help you listen to the Lord. This will help you to take some creativity, not because we want it personally, but because that's the way God wants you to love that person. So let me share to you about the five love languages. You know, in Ictus, we love coffee. That is why we really love this kind of way of explaining the five love languages. So there are five love languages that probably allow the Lord to speak to you right now. How you're going to love your children, how you're going to love your husband, how you're going to love your, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friends, your parents. Okay. So just allow the Lord as I explain what are the overview of these five love languages. Allow the Lord Ask the Lord, Lord, how do you want me to love my spouse, my family, my kids? So, there are five love languages. And this is the way we do it in Ictus. Now, the first one is what we call words of affirmation. What is the word of affirmation? It means that you are loving that person. The love language, not yours, but probably your wife or your children's uh, love language is words of affirmation. It means that you just need to utter words that can encourage them. Example, if for the coffee lovers, it is something like this. Your coffee is delicious. It is appreciating that person. So if that person, his or her love language is words of affirmation, what does it mean? That person will be so filled with love. Love thankful. But be careful. Because when a person's love language is really words of affirmation, bullying, and making some jokes, and even abusive words can hurt this person so bad. So you need to be careful. And if you are that person whose words of affirmation is your first love language, then probably that's why you're experiencing some big hurts of abusive words and even bullying. But remember this, beloved, how to express um, love towards these people. Maybe a certain note, I love you, hon. Or probably just appreciate, you're beautiful, you're handsome, you're special, your coffee is delicious. Now, the second one, beloved, is what we call, the second love language is act of service. What is act of service? Example, if you're a coffee lover, it's not about just telling your coffee is delicious, but probably, I made you coffee. It means that this kind of person is, if this person will be helped out in the household church, church, this person can feel so much love. By helping this person, then you are 
putting a lot of of love this the, the 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 cup the cup of love will be filled with love and it will overflow because that person felt love because you're helping in some church but remember what what is that one thing that can hurt this person when you count the things that you've done example I'm the one washing the clothes today, draining everything and cleaning the car and all. Then maybe tomorrow it's going to be you. When you're starting to count the household chores and what you've done, then that's going to be hurting this kind of person whose love language is acts of service. So be careful. The third one is receiving gifts. Now, not, note this. This is not about materialism. But no matter how small it is, it might be a DIY kind of gift, but this person will surely be Surely be filled with love when you give something, especially on the special days. Beloved, if this person is the kind of love language is receiving gifts, in Ictus, we call it here's some coffee. So it's about giving something. So this person will surely feel so loved because that's his or her love language. But remember this, when there, one of the things that can break this person is when you miss out no? sometimes maybe not because he or she is materialistic but probably if that's her or his love language but during special occasions you are forgetting him or her probably it can you know make him or her feel a little bit sad because she's expecting something but remember again it's not materialism it's about that is his or her love language it means no matter it's just a ball pen, no matter it's just like a five peso kind of gift that you're giving, but it will be received with a joy and love thankful for, for that person. So that's receiving gifts. The, f the fourth one is what we call quality time. There are a lot of people where their love language is nothing. We have nothing to do. Let's just be together. Let's just sit down. Let's just be at home. Let's just be in a coffee shop. And then, just like this, if you're a coffee lover and then your love language is quality time, you might tell that person, let's go out for a coffee. Let's just chill. So, if this is the kind of love language that, you're, that the people that you love, now remember, one of the things that can hurt them is when you schedule a time with them, you plan it out to go out by Saturday 3 p.m. and then you suddenly cancel it out. That's one of the things that can hurt them. So be careful, husband and wife and children, especially parents, when you start to um, let your children be excited. We'll be going to the mall this Sunday afternoon and suddenly, oh, I have a game to, to have sorry children. And then their love language is quality time. They will be hurt badly. So be careful, especially, and give more time. Your presence is important for those people. There might be birthday, but if their love language is quality time, it's not about just the gift. It's your presence that you make time is the most important thing. So, beloved, this last one is what we call physical touch. Uh, if you, you can relate this if you are also a coffee lover. Let me hold you like a warm cup of coffee. It means that physical touch is not just about like for the physical, like sexual thing that the couple or the married people are doing. But for the spouse, it's going to be one of the love language. For those married people, that's going to be their love language. But for those friends, for the family, it might be a tap in the shoulder. It might be a hug. You know, in our inner healing, we learned this, the, the, the rule of 12 hugs. One, of, one time we have this seminar and our instructor says, if you want just survival, you, should, you need at least four hugs a day. Imagine that. But if you want maintenance, you need 8 hugs a day. But if you want growth, you need 12 hugs a day. Again, 4 for survival, 8 for maintenance, and 12 for growth. That's why now we realize why sometimes we're just so stressed up every day. We are not growing because probably we don't even have four hugs a day. Maybe once a year during Valentine season or probably Christmas that we have that hug. Or probably when we buy and say, see you next year and we have that last one hug. But 
honestly, not only for those people whose love language is physical touch, but for all of us, we need affirmation through physical touch. So husband and wives and parents to your children, know that. Do you want just to survive? You need at least four hugs. You want to grow? You need 12 hugs. So the question is today, while you are watching this message, how many hugs have you done today or this week, last week? One, two, three, four. Today, let's apply this, especially for the people whose love language is physical touch. Okay? So, beloved, these are the simple foundations from the Word of God in terms of loving God by loving others. I hope and pray that those lessons that we learn from this series, and not only from this series, but even today, do you really want to love God by loving others? There are three important things that you need to do. Number one, I need to lovingly obey God. We obey not out of compulsion, but we obey because we love God above all. Secondly, I need to love myself as a child of God. Build up your identity. Fill yourself with God's love, God's grace, God's mercy, and let it overflow so that it will be a natural way and it will be a natural uh, flow of love that you can express it to love others the way God wants us to do it. So, beloved, as we end, and the last part, let me challenge you with this. Continue to keep Jesus as the first love in your life. You might not have all the answers right now for the challenges in your relationships as you soul search about your identity, but it will always start with Jesus because Jesus is himself is love. God is love. And for those who don't love, they are still living in death. But those who love, there is new life. Beloved, my prayer for you today, that as we summarize what we have learned for the past um, four Sundays, first, second, third, and today is the fourth Sunday, we're being reminded how to keep loving Jesus as first in all relationships, in all areas in our life, and in everything that we do. And it's being in the acronym word LOVE. L stands for love, loving God as a response of His love. Two, overflow, loving God from the overflow of His grace and mercy. V stands for value, loving God with a valued position. And third, uh, fourthly, explore, loving God by loving others. So beloved, my prayer for you today, may you continue to grow and increase in God's presence and in God's way of what He wants you to do and how you, He wants you to love God and to love others. Let us bow down our head and let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day of culminating your series, O Lord. And Lord, it is everything about you. It's all about you, Jesus. And thank you for reminding us to really love God with everything that we have. And thank you, God, for reminding us that we need to be intact in our identity. And as we love ourselves, O oh Lord, that your grace, your mercy, and your love will continue to fill our cups so that we can be sensitive in how you want others to be filled love, not by the way how we want it, but the way you have commanded us. Thank you for opening up those five love languages. We pray that we discover our love language and we now know how to love our family, our friends, the people that surround us by their love languages. Thank you, O God. And Lord, may all your grace and blessings be upon us all as we close this message. This is all we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us, beloved, and see you next Sunday as we open a new series here in Ictus Dumaguete. Have a blessed day, everyone. We are so thankful, O oh God, for this time of worship. As we continue to worship you, Lord, bless our hearts, O oh God. We want to offer this song to you. Declaring that you're good. Declaring that you are our Savior. Savior, I come. Quiet my soul. Remember. A redemption's here.
For our tithes and offerings, you may give online by scanning the QR codes of our different online banking platforms that will be shown on the screen. You may also contact our finance officer, Ms. Eva Lucero, at 0995-080-1107. Allow me to read a short reflection entitled, The Three Calls of God Urging Us to Give. In Psalm 29, verse 1 and 2, it says, Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due His name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of His holiness. Three calls to give ring out from, the, from these verses. The first call is to the mighty. According to Peter, the believer is not, the believer is not mighty within himself but is to humble himself under the mighty hand of God, that he may be exalted in due time. Mighty men in waiting. The second call challenges us to give God the proper place in our lives that recognizes his glory and strength. The third call instructs us to ascribe the proper glory to his name, giving all to him that we should. After these three calls have been met, then and only then can we come to the lofty subject of worship. There are many voices in our generation 
calling upon us to give for one purpose or another. But we should be sensitive, first and foremost. The calls of God upon our lives to give so that we may enter into real worship. Many would say they don't like to talk about giving in church, but God does. Let us give because we understand it to be a calling of the voice of God. Let us pray. Lord God, our Creator, we joyfully present to you our tithes and offerings. Thank you for your three calls. You warned us to humble ourselves to your mighty hand. And yes, Lord, we claim it that you are the owner of our hearts. Live in us, O God, so that we can worship you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strength. We praise you, honor you, and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.